Welcome back, everyone. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the second round here of the FIDE Candidates Tournament being held in Toronto, Canada. Now, in the second round, I was playing with a white piece against Vidit Santosh Gujarathi from India, one of the players who qualified alongside myself in the Grand Swiss in Isle of Man. So without further ado, let's jump right into the action. So the game starts with e4, Vita plays e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop to b5, and now we get the move knight to f6. Now this, of course, is the classic Berlin defense, which has been played a lot prominently by the former world chess champion Vladimir Kramnik when he defeated the greatest player, I was about to say the greatest player of all time, but one of the greatest players of all time, Gary Kasparov, in the match in, I believe, 2000. So Berlin defense has been a top-level Top level opening for the last 20 years, played by many great players, including myself. So it's not really a huge surprise. So here I decide to play the move d3. Now, of course, in many games between myself and Wesley So in the past, we have actually played a forced draw with castles. Knight takes e4, d4, knight d6, takes, takes a4, knight d4, swap the knights, d6, takes, takes, queen e4, queen e6, queen d4, queen d6, with the game ending in a draw. Now, obviously, in a tournament like the Canids, you don't want to make quick draws. Of course, it's not really a huge surprise in the opening either, so the game continues. So here I play the move d3, Vita goes bishop to c5, and now I play the move c3. Now, white could try to castle here, but one of the drawbacks is that black can play this move knight to d4, trying to swap off a pair of horses or win this bishop on b5. So, for example, if you move the bishop, black can trade the knights and play d6, and generally this is considered to be very, very stable, and white is not better. So that's why in the game I play the move c3, stopping the knight from jumping to this d4 square as I cover it with the pawn. Beat it plays the move castles, and now I decide to castle, and here Beat it plays the move d6. Now, this move is not a pure surprise. Beat it normally plays this move pawn to d5, but after d6, I actually started thinking here for a little bit as I simply was unsure of which line to play. Now, the two moves that I was considering during the game were knight bd2 or this move h3. Now, both moves are playable, but at the end of the day, I decided to play h3. So after h3, Beat it plays knight to e7. I go d4, attacking the bishop on c5, and now he plays this move c6. Now, this already was a slight surprise to me. Normally here, black moves the bishop back to b6, but Vita goes c6 instead. Now, on first glance, you're probably thinking, well, white can take the bishop, black takes the bishop, you take this pawn. But after knight to g6, even though white is temporarily up this pawn on d6, the pawn on e4 is currently under attack. And down the road, let's say I play with like queen to d3, bishop to d7 here, Black intends to play moves like rook c8, queen b6, and rook c6. And on top of that, my opponent, Vita Gujarathi, was already moving very, very quickly. Or not already, I should say. Still was moving very, very quickly at this point in the game. And this is one of the big differences between a tournament like the Canids and just a regular strong top-level tournament where the players have months to prepare ahead of time. Now, because of that, players are going to be very well prepared, and they're not simply going to make a blunder on move 8. So c6 is played. I decide to play the move bishop d3 because I trust that Vita's preparation is there and I want to keep the game going. So here the bishop on d3 guards the pawn on e4 from being captured and now Vita goes bishop b6. Now again, this is all very, very surprising to me because I at the board, you'll notice that I had an hour 41 on the clock, and I used over 20 minutes before deciding to take this pawn on e5. Now, it was a very, very tough decision for me here because there were a couple things going through my mind. First of all, I can go for the principal approach like I did in the game with capturing the pawn, but I can also be very solid here with a move like rook to e1, knight g6, knight bd2, let's say black was rook e8, and now I can play something like knight f1 or bishop c2. Now, objectively, white is not better here, but you keep all the pieces on the board, and this remains a very, very slow, very, very positional game, similar to what we get in the classic Gucci piano. But after using a lot of time here, I decided to go for the principled approach by taking the pawn on e5, taking on e5, and now Vita played bishop h3. Now, after bishop to h3, I played this move knight c4. And this was a start of, I don't want to really use it to say copium, where I'm trying to like make excuses for like not finding moves, but this was a start of many decisions I made in this game where I looked at one line and then for whatever reason, I made a completely different decision during the game. Now, the reason that I say that is because I used 20 minutes before going for this variation and I actually expected bishop takes h3. Now, originally I was going to take and after queen b8, I thought that there's this move bishop to f4 guarding the knight. If I move my knight away, for example, black is actually better after this move queen g3, checking the king on g1, king h1 takes and after knight h2, rook d8, maybe Maybe black's not even better. Maybe black's actually just outright winning here. But at any rate, it's not good for white. 
So when I was calculating this whole knight takes e5 line, I saw this position with queen b8. And I knew that in this position, I could go bishop to f4. And after bishop c7 here, there were a couple options. I could play bishop g3, where the computer actually gives white a very small advantage. After takes, f4, bishop c7, and queen to f3, since white has the two b's and a little bit of space in the center with the pawns on e4 and f4. Now, of course, Vita was very well prepared, so probably I would not have gotten any advantage even if I had played this in the game, but this was one of the interesting possibilities. Now, as a sign of how off sort of my calculation of everything was, I also thought I could potentially play bishop g5 here, because after takes, f4, and h6, I thought the game would end in a draw with takes, 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 queen g3, king h1, takes king g1 and a repetition. But the computer actually says that after queen g3, king h1, and rook fd8, black is in fact a little bit better here. Maybe not winning, but black has everything to play for. But in spite of calculating these lines while I was anticipating d5 takes, knight e5, and bishop h3, at the board I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go knight c4 and get the bishop pair and try to keep the game going. Now pretty much as soon as I played this move, I realized this was not the best move because of what Vita did in the game with this move, bishop g4. Now here I played this move queen c2, which was also, by the way, not my first choice. Initially, I was going to play bishop e2, but fortunately, in the nick of time, I spotted that this is actually a blunder before playing it. I thought during the game that after the trade, takes, takes, knight takes e4, that I was actually possibly winning here, because after takes, takes, and rook e1, both of these knights are under pressure. You move the knight away, I win the knight on e7, and with it, I win the game. If black goes f5, there's f3 to force the knight away. So I thought for a second this was actually very simple for me. I get to an end game here, and I'm completely fine. But as I realized, after knight takes e4, takes, takes, and rook e1, black has a very nasty move, knight to c5, sacking the horse on e7, but then playing this move, knight to b3, attacking the rook in the corner. In this position, black, I guess it's not actually winning here. Computer only gives, gives white a slightly worse position, which actually is a little bit disturbing. I guess there's rook to e1, takes a knight to a3 here with a bishop moving to e3 down the road, and maybe the show goes on. But what I saw was takes, takes, and now I lose either the knight on b1 or the bishop on c1. So I spotted this in the nick of time, which meant that I then played the move queen c2. But already the problem with this whole, with the way the game is going, is I'm already down a lot of time on the clock here. I only have an hour where I'm move number 13. There's no increment, so I know I have to speed up. And I know that I've missed quite a bit already. First of all, I didn't play the line I intended to with bishop f4. I overlooked this tactic with this knight takes e4, knight c5. So already here I was feeling quite shaky. So Vita goes bishop c7 after a very, very long think. I don't even know if this is the best move. I was actually expecting him to go knight g6. And after takes, takes, computer still gives black a, quite a bit of an advantage due to the lack of the development of the white pieces on the queen side. So Vita plays bishop c7 after a long thing. And in my mind here, I'm thinking, okay, Vita has used all this time to get the time back to eat, or he's used over half an hour. Time is even, it's back to playing a game. So I played e5 very quickly, trying to attack the knight on f6 here and win this pawn on h7. Vita goes knight d7, I take on h7, he plays king h8, and now I play this move bishop to d3 after a long thing. Now this is the second example of where I have a thought in my mind and I go for something else. Initially, I told myself that I was either going either gonna to look at lives for a couple of minutes or play bishop d3 right away. So what happens? I end up spending 20 minutes and not trusting my instinct. Now, the two moves that I considered here were bishop to g5 or this move queen to e4. Now, at first glance, it looks like queen to e4 loses the game because after f5 attacking the queen, suddenly the coordination between the queen and the bishop is off and the pawn guards the bishop on g4. Now, I do not play end peasant with pawn takes pawn because after knight takes pawn, knight guards the bishop, hits the queen and this bishop on h7 at the same time, and with it, I lose the game. But there's a nice sacrifice with bishop takes pawn, takes queen to h4, king g8, and now after bishop g5, rook f7, and knight to d6, the game is wildly out of control here. I've got this massive pin on the knight on e7 with the bishop and the queen, the rook's under attack. If you take the knight, I take back, and now I win some material. And if black plays move, knight takes e5, computer says after bishop e7, takes, takes, rook f7, takes, takes, and I guess knight d4. Probably black is still better, but white is very much in the game. Now, I did consider this, but then I then I think I overlooked something along the lines of takes, and I think I thought that after bishop g5, he has some knight g6, takes, takes, bishop c7, and bishop d3 type idea. At this point, it's been more than an hour since the game, so I'm a little bit lost in my thoughts, but something along these lines I saw, and so I didn't play it. 
Now, the other line that I considered as well was to play this move bishop to g5, which also looks quite tricky. But ultimately, I rejected this move because if black were to play a move like, let's say, g6, for example, now queen to e4 is extremely strong because after bishop to h5, queen to h4, the same idea of pinning the tail on the donkey probably wins the game for white. But black does have this move f6 attacking the bishop, and after takes, takes, if I move the bishop to, let's say, h6, for example, after f5, Bishop takes f8, queen takes f8. Computer still doesn't say that white's completely lost, but with this activity of the bishops here, the queen coming into the game as well, and the knight and the rook on b1 and a1 not active, it just feels really, really bad. So after all this time of thinking, I basically decided, you know what, I'm going to play bishop d3 instead, because I know I'm not going to lose the game on the spot here, or so I thought, and the show goes on. Now, after bishop d3 beat it, play this move b5 after a bit of a think, and this move kind of surprised me. I thought that Vita would actually trade on e5 here, and after rook e1, bishop c7 with ideas like queen d6, I felt that black should be better. Now, how much better remains unclear, but with this rook, knight, and bishop underdeveloped, it feels like black has better chances. So Vita instead goes b5, which I thought was dubious at the time. I played knight e3, knight takes e5, and now I play this move bishop to e2. Now there's another example of where you'll notice from my move, I played this move in four seconds, and this was simply my brain stopped working yet again. When, when I calculated bishop d3, b5 before playing this move bishop to d3, my intention was to play this endgame with takes, takes, queen d3, takes, takes, and now something like a4 here, and after, say, bishop b6, not bishop b6, sorry, after f5, knight h2, Something like bishop b6, black is definitely better, white is underdeveloped on the queen side, but maybe there's some chances to save the game down the road. But instead, I use all of four seconds here, and now I play this move bishop e2. And once again, I'm simply at a loss for words in terms of why I did this move. Now, the other thing is when I mentioned knight takes g4 after the game, Vita said that he was going to play knight takes knight and not queen takes bishop, which makes this decision even worse on some level. Because after takes and queen to e2, f5 here, maybe white is still okay with ideas like g3 and king g2. Objectively, black remains quite a bit better, but it feels like there are some chances. Instead, I play bishop e2, and after, after beat it now finds this very nice move, f5. I would say that for a computer, maybe it could still save this game, from, but from a human perspective, it's very, very close to loss. Now, the reason for that is that the rook is very active here. I'm lacking in development. These three pieces still are not in the game, so I go knight to a3. Sample line would be queen to e8 with the idea of queen to h5, and all of a sudden, there are massive checkmating threats on the h file. Black can play for f4 and f3 as well, and as you can see from the bar, the game is just not going my way. So after f5, I played this move f4, and again, not trying to sort of make excuses or try to make this something weird, but when I played f4, I simply did not see Vita's next move, which was bishop b6, which in my opinion, just wins on the spot. I thought here I was only slightly worse after he trades the bishops and plays something like knight to d3, and I go g3, bishop b6, and something like king g2. Now the great part about this, and this is actually why I'm starting to laugh a little bit, is this, show, this is also another sign of how poorly I was sort of calculating or how everything was not working today, because even here I thought I might be a little bit worse, but the computer says after knight to d5, it's simply minus two and black is completely winning. So. Vita does not go for that. He plays bishop b6, which was actually, I thought, it was a move I didn't see, and I think it effectively ends the game on the spot, and the reason is quite simple. If I take this free horse on e5, there's knight to d5, this knight on e3 is pinned here, and just to give some sample lines, say I play a move like bishop g4, there's knight e3, takes, 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 king h2, not queen to h4 check, because then I can block with the bishop here, but after takes, 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 I'm lacking in development on the queen side. The rook and the knight are not in the game. If I move my knight to a3 after queen f4, if I go king h1, there's queen h6 with checkmate. And if I play g3, same thing. Check. King g2 and queen to h3 is also checkmate as well, as my king on g2 simply has no squares available. So after a long thing here, I decide to have some fun and play this very funny looking move king to f2. Now, of course, king f2 is effectively the same thing as a resignation, but I didn't see a better move, and I thought it'd be kind of funny to try and bring, to the, bring the king to the center, and maybe, just maybe, I can play a bong clap. So after king to f2, Vita plays knight d5, sacking the knight again on e5. At this point, there are many ways for black to win. Knight d5 isn't the only way, but it's probably the most effective. Play rook to h1 check, 
And here, Vita goes king g8, and now I decide to take the horse. Now, temporarily, I'm up a horse on e3, but with this pin in play here and queen g5 being played, black's forces are simply overwhelming. And yet again, I have a rook, a knight, and a bishop, which have simply not moved the entire game. Again, people at home, do not try and do this, because when you don't develop your pieces, bad things happen. So here I go king to e1. Of course, I'm trying to set up the board here with the rooks, the rook, the knight, the bishop, the king, and the rook, all in their original squares. All I'm lacking are the bishop, the knight, and the queen from being on their original squares, but I'm doing my best to set up the board, set up the pieces during the game, so I don't have to waste time afterwards doing it. So Vita plays bishop takes knight. Now this move is winning as our as are basically all moves. Knight takes e3 is probably a little bit cleaner, but it really doesn't matter because black can bring the rooks to the center of the board, and I've moved my king all over the place. There's no hope of ever trying to castle it to the queen side. So now I play bishop takes bishop, feed it takes, I trade the bishops, and at least I've gotten rid of one of my pieces. I got my bishop developed on move number 25. So after knight takes bishop, I play queen to e2, he goes queen g3, king d2, he plays rook a d8, and now I go king c1. Here Vita plays queen to g5, and now I play this move b3, trying to manually castle my king to the queen side. Now it's very close, very close to maybe surviving for another five to ten moves here, if not for the next move Vita finds. If you were to play a move like rook to e8, for example, after knight to d2, even though black is winning here, I'm very close to getting my knight in the game. If I get, get the knight to f3, at least it'll go on for another five to ten moves. But here Vita plays move knight to f1, which is a nice discovered check, attacking the king on c1. And here I decide to resign the game because if I move the king to b2, there's knight to g3, which forks both the queen on e2 and the rook on h1. And with the rook and the knight not coming into the game, there's really no good reason to continue. So, unfortunately with that, I lose in the second round of Vita Gujarati. I would say he played quite well. He found some very enterprising moves, bishop b6 and f5. From my standpoint, if I look at it with the silver lining, I simply was not there today. This was easily the worst game of chess I've played in the last couple of years. As you probably saw, even during this recap, there were moments where I thought the position was fine with that F4 G3, where it simply was not fine. It was completely lost. Uh, it just felt like today, for whatever reason, my calculations were not there. Um, I did not make the right decisions in the opening either. And with that, I lost. And I would say it's a very deserved victory for Vita, a very deserved loss for me when you play the way I did today. I have no business uh, surviving in such a game. So it's not what I was hoping for. The great news is it's a long tournament. Um, so there still are 12 more rounds. The disappointing part is that considering, as I said before, it's the worst game I think that I've played in the last couple of years, that it had to be in this tournament. It couldn't have been in the Isle of Man or, say, any other classical tournament I've played over the last few years. But that's life. You can't really ask why does it happen here or not there. You just have to deal with it and move forward. So I lose in the second round. Tomorrow I'm going to be playing with a black piece against Nijat Abasov from Azerbaijan, who lost in the second round as well to Fabiano Caruana. There were four decisive results today, so the action is heating up. That probably bodes well for me because it means that players are going to be very aggressive, taking more chances, and hopefully I will have some opportunities to try and win some games in the remaining rounds. So, on that note, I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap of the second round of the FIDE Canada's tournament being held here in Toronto, Canada. I will, of course, be recapping all of my games. Hopefully they aren't like today, because today was definitely a, a bummer, but that's how it goes. So I hope you've enjoyed the recap. Make, if you have not already subscribed to the channel, make sure that you smash that subscribe button below, and we'll be back tomorrow with a recap after my third round gaming as Nijat Abbasov from Azerbaijan. See you guys. Bye.